Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador, and I'd like to talk to you about the Zebra feature on Sony Alpha cameras, specifically for photographers who have chosen to shoot in the RAW file format. Now, the Zebra feature can be used as an aid for choosing the appropriate exposure. Just by the fact that we are using mirrorless cameras is already an aid to choosing appropriate exposure because we get uh, uh, what you see is what you get view and often we can choose to shoot with a live histogram. This can uh, enable us to uh, use exposure compensation when required, basically lowering the exposure from what the meter has chosen or increasing the exposure. Now, the goal for choosing appropriate exposure is basically getting all of the shadows and highlights uh, between the dynamic range or capabilities of the sensor. Now, the most important aspect of that exposure is making sure that the highlights, the brightest tones in the image, are not overexposed. So this has led to most photographers exposing for the highlights, protecting that highlight value so that it doesn't overexpose and then processing uh, the file in post-production editing software for the shadows, basically using the shadows or exposure sliders to increase the tonality in that area. So if I just show you a couple of images, here I am protecting those bright highlights behind this subject that I'm photographing and then I'll simply just raise that shadows and exposure sliders to get to the uh, uh, output image uh, that I would actually like to present. Same thing here, we have a bird with white plumage. I must protect the, uh, the texture inside of those white feathers. So the exposure is slightly lower. So the shadows are a little bit darker than I want. And then using post-production software, just raise those shadows back out. So just once again, we're exposing for the highlights and processing for the shadows. Now there are some instances where the dominant tones within an image are bright or light tones. This leads to the camera underexposing slightly because the meter wants to average everything out. Now those highlights should be bright, not overexposed, but they should be bright. So this often leads me to raising the exposure by maybe one stop in camera to uh, basically make the shadows just a little bit lighter because the shadows will be better quality if I can raise the exposure in camera. To give you another example, because of that dominant white wall, I'm having to raise the exposure by one stop so the man's jacket, the dark man's jacket, isn't underexposed. Now occasionally when we're doing this, there is always the risk that we will overexpose those highlights. We can glance down to that histogram in the bottom right hand corner of the finder or monitor and just check to see what is happening on the right side of that histogram. If the histogram is touching that right side wall and maybe climbing up the wall, there is a risk that we're overexposing those highlights. Having said that, the histogram is a preview of the JPEG image that the camera is, uh, or preview that the camera is recording. So it's not an absolutely faithful um, uh, look at what is actually recording to the RAW file format. Now, if we do overexpose those highlights um, and they clip, um, we basically uh, may risk the fact that we can't recover any detail into those highlights. And if you pull down the highlight slider, maybe pull down the exposure slider, what will populate those areas of overexposure is just a flat gray tone without texture or detail. And this is generally what we're trying to avoid. And this is where the zebra uh, feature can come to our rescue. Now we can have that live histogram as I've said, but if we switch the zebra feature on and it gives us an idea of what tones are overexposed, we're not going to miss this overexposure. And this is going to lean us towards hitting that exposure compensation dial winding down the exposure, might be a third of a stop or maybe a whole stop, just so we get some detail into those highlight tones. It doesn't really matter if the subject goes a little bit dark because we can recover those shadows in post-production. So this will al allow me for maybe when I'm photographing um, light colored subjects like these uh, white pelicans that I can raise the exposure and if the zebra feature doesn't appear I know that I'm not overexposing those highlights. If that zebra feature does appear because I've raised the exposure too much then I can just back off again until the zebras disappear.
Now by default the zebras are set very low. So there are basically two controls we can switch zebras on and we can also set the value of the highlights which will showcase the zebras. When videographers or people shooting movies use zebras, they're often not looking to be warned about overexposure. They're looking for confirmation that some of the bright tones in the image are exactly where they need to be. So generally, um, people shooting movies professionally want the zebras always to appear on the nominated tones. This could be maybe the light tones of a shirt, or it could be Caucasian skin tones, which is typically why zebras are set quite low at 70 in this instance. Now for JPEG shooters who are shooting stills, maybe you don't be wanting to look at those zebras all of the time, so you put the zebra value very, very high. For instance, you could set it to 100 plus. This tells you what tones are overexposing if you're recording JPEGs. So you can see the zebras here appearing on the, uh, on the white top of the guy and also on the bright white area on his helmet. So this again is basically leading you towards uh, moving towards your exposure compensation dial, reducing the exposure so those bright white tones do not have any zebras uh, on them. Now for the raw shooter it gets a little bit more complicated because there is a recovery for very bright highlights in post-production that often JPEG shooters don't have. And so we don't want to set the zebras at just 100 plus, we want to set it quite a lot higher because of that recovery headroom that we do have when shooting in the raw file format. So my settings for shooting zebras when I switch it on are to use lower limit 109. Now you may need to test this with your specific camera. I have come across another photographer online setting it to 107. Now it's not just that number 107, 109, it's also the lower limit. So we've got two adjustments to do that and we set it up in a custom one or a custom two setting so that uh, when I'm raising the exposure or we've got some very bright highlights those zebras will appear. Most of the time when I'm shooting I'm not looking at any zebras at all. That would annoy me if I was always looking at some zebras in, in the viewfinder. So I only want to be warned when I absolutely need to lower the exposure. Now let's just go back to the camera. We can set this up on the Sony's APS-C cameras and their full frame cameras. So we go into the uh, zebra feature. Um, we come down to C1 if you haven't set a custom setting before. You move over to the right. You change the standard plus range to lower limit. And then you set the, uh, the number to 107 or 109. I'm uh, typically using 109 for my camera at the moment. So once you've set that up, you just need to be able to switch uh, Zebra on or off and then you'll get the warning. So that if we're raising exposure, and a lot of photographers will raise the exposure if they can, because there is an old um, uh, saying which is we expose to the right, uh, ETTR, which is basically a way of getting the best quality shadow information. But we don't want to do that at the expense of overexposing the highlights. So if I'm trying to raise the exposure, expose to the right in this image, and then the zebras appear, I then lower the exposure. So I've got rich detail in those highlights and the best possible uh, quality for my shadow detail. Now here I am lowering the exposure in this instance because we've got an extreme subject contrast here. Now I'm trying to uh, avoid bracketing, so I want some information left in the sky. So I've switched zebras on, I'm lowering the exposure by minus one stop, but the zebras are still appearing in that sky. I haven't lowered the exposure enough. So I might, and I actually did this one, I lowered the exposure to minus three stops on my A7R4, and that does render the shadow detail very, very dark. 
but because the dynamic range is so good on this particular camera I can then raise the uh, shadow detail in post-production and bring the highlights down even further. Now you may have to bracket on some cameras but this is an option certainly for full frame and specifically for the cameras which have huge dynamic range and very good quality in the shadow details. Now let me refer you to another, um, an old um, a rule for photography. It's called the Sunny 16 rule. This always uh, said that if we were to use uh, an aperture of f16 and then kept the, uh, the shutter speed number and the ISO number the same, we would not risk overexposing highlights. This is often adopted by street photographers working in sunny conditions. And this uh, absolutely protects bright highlights such as the one we can see in this photograph here, the woman in the white dress. Now typically what would happen if the camera was on auto exposure is with all of these dark shadow tones the camera would raise the exposure and risk overexposing the highlights. So zebras would basically warn us that the camera is raising the exposure automatically too far and get us to back off. Alternatively we could just set the camera to manual exposure. Now I don't actually use F16, 100 ISO and a hundredth of a second. I don't find those settings particularly useful. But I, I, I basically use um, that rule um, uh, and adapt some of the settings. For instance, the setting there, F6.3, 1 2,000th of a second, ISO 320 is my default starting for um, action photography where I choose to use manual exposure. Now where I would choose to use manual exposure is in an instance like this. I'm tracking a bird that's flying but the bird is sometimes has a background of sky, very bright, and sometimes of dark trees. So I'd have to be using exposure compensation all of the time to basically allow for the overly dark background or the overly bright background. So in these instances it's actually easier just to choose manual exposure. So what I'm doing here is I'm switching the zebra feature on so that if I'm having to um, adjust the exposure because it's not sunny weather and I'm having to maybe increase the ISO to raise the exposure, I can use the zebras to let me know very quickly that I've raised the exposure too far. So I simply back off on the ISO to adjust the manual exposure for the ambient lighting conditions that I'm working with. So basically that is what I'm advising in some instances. Most of my sports action I'm using auto exposure but in these few instances where the subject is always in the same amount of light uh, but the background tone keeps changing I might switch over to manual exposure and then use my zebra function to work out what is the most appropriate exposure from the starting point of the Sunny 16 rule. Okay, so if you found that information useful, just make sure you head over to my website, www.markgaylor.com. All of the learning resources here are free to download, and then you just, you just donate what you think it's worth. Now, I have a, a full range of um, uh, tutorial movies on my Alpha Creative Skills YouTube channel. Um, you can also access those from my website. What you can access from my website also is a range of ebooks. And again, it's, they're free to download, and then you just donate what you think uh, it was worth. For people who want to, con um, to connect with me um, on Q&A forums, message me privately, um, um, you can do this um, via my Patreon account. So just head over to Patreon, look for Mark Gaylor, and you can join for as little as uh, $5 per month. And I also offer a photo critique service and live seminars or um, recorded seminars for the members. So that concludes my uh, Zebra 109 Plus uh, video tutorial. Just give me the thumbs up if you like it and make sure you subscribe.